There are loads of graphs in the CAP698 document related to Class B aircraft, giving us various weights and distance limitations. And that's what we're gonna do in this class. We're just gonna have a nice little look at them. Hi, I'm Grant and welcome to class 13 in the performance series. Today we're going to be taking a look at some of the graphs in the CAP698 document related to class B aircraft. There's far too many to cover in one video, so I've just picked a selection of questions from the question bank that I'll be running through, giving you examples, showing you how to use the CAP698 document to your advantage should you get stuck in the exam. Okay, so first off we're going to be looking at this question, which is taken directly from the question bank. The reference and the parameter should be in the top left of the screen. And this is actually my second time trying to film this. The first time I tried to film this, I was so busy drawing the lines on the graph that all you could see was the back of my head. All you could see was this as I'm concentrating. So I've left the lines on and I'm basically just gonna highlight what I've done um, in the edit and hopefully that's a clearer way because you don't want to be staring at uh, my hair for the next 20 minutes or whatever this video is. So the first thing I do with these sort of things is I look at the example question. I look at these dotted lines on the graph and look, about, look at how I'm supposed to draw the lines on and hopefully it makes sense at what line, at what line do I go straight across, at what line do I follow it down, things like that. Just get familiar, look at the example in the top right and compare it to the dotted lines that are on there. So, the first thing we do is we enter in the pressure altitude and the temperature. So the temperature is 5 degrees and the pressure altitude is 4,000 feet. So we go up to this line and then we follow it across to the reference line, which is exactly the same as the example does. From that point, we follow the guideline down to our weight. Our weight is 3,530 pounds, which is about here. So I've drawn a line up and followed the guideline down from the reference line to cross over at this point here. From the crossover point, we go straight across along to the next reference line. And then at, then at that next reference line, we follow the headwind guideline down the way because we have a headwind of 50 knots. 50 knot lines here, follow the guideline down to cross over. And then just as per the example, we go straight across to the next reference line. From that reference line, we then follow up these next guidelines to clear the applicable obstacle height, which would be the um, landing distance. We obviously want to clear the obstacles when we're landing. And we come up with an answer which is about 1,400 feet. The answers that were available were 880, 1,550, 1,020, and 1,350. So we just select the closest available, as you might not always get the answer spot on. Um, basically because you might not follow the lines quite as accurate as they want. Um, but it's quite a good thing because it means that the answers are quite far apart. You don't get answers that are, you know, 1350 and 1450. You get one that is 1350 and then the next one is, you know, 300 feet less than that. It's, um, they space them out so it's easier to assess which one is the correct answer. So example two has the following details and reference number. We have a takeoff run available of 2,900, clear way of 550, stop way of 1,200, 0.8% uh, upslope, and it's wet grass. And it basically wants to know, the question wants to know, what distance to enter the graph with to determine the field length limiting takeoff mass. So in the last example, we put in everything we knew and we applied any factors, but basically we didn't need to apply any factors because there was no runway characteristics to compare it against. Um, but in this way, we need to sort of do it in reverse. We're working backwards because we don't know the mass, but we will be able to find out the distance, the headwind, pressure altitude, and the temperature, and we're going to be working from left and right to meet in the middle. Um, but in actual fact, this question, we're not even doing the working back to fit in the middle. We're just figuring out what we need to enter uh, on this side of the graph so that we could make that work if we need to. So. The factors that we need to apply because we have a stop weight and a clear weight are as follows. We've got the takeoff distance required has to be less than the, less than the takeoff run available. The takeoff distance required times 1.15 has to be less than the takeoff distance available. And the takeoff distance required times 1.3 has to be less than the accelerate stop distance available. 
it's best to lay this out in a little bit of a table. So let's calculate these distances. So takeoff distance required has to be less than 2,900. Or the takeoff distance required times 1.15 has to be less than 3,450. And the takeoff distance required times 1.3 has to be less than 4,100. We then need to apply all the relevant factors for wet grass um, and the slope. So all those distances get divided by 1.3 to give these answers. And then for every 1% of upslope, we increase the distance by 5%. So with our 0.8% upslope, we apply a 4% correction. And then we need to remove the regulation factors. So with the slope, we get these factors. And then for the regulation factors, we get this. So for the first column on our table, we get the takeoff distance required has to be less than 2,900, which when we apply the distance and the slope factor and the regulation, it's 2145. The next column, we get a final answer of 2219, and the next column would be 2333 feet. We use the most limiting one, which would be 2145, and the options that were open to us included 2332, so almost the third column, 2218, 2000, and 2145. So you just need to remember to take the most limiting one, and that's what we would put in on this side of the graph to then find out uh, a takeoff mass. But that's not the que what the question is asking. It's just asking us what we're going to put on this side. In this next example, we basically have to do the same thing as we just did. Think about all the relevant factors, then also use it in the graph to find out the field length limiting mass. We have a takeoff run available of 2,000 feet, takeoff distance available of 3,000 feet, and an accelerate stop distance available of 2,500. It's a paved dry runway, um, which means no factors in that terms, uh, in that sense even, sorry. And pressure altitude 4,000 feet, temperature 15 degrees, headwind 10 knots. So the first thing I'm going to do is find out what our limiting distances are, just as we did in the previous example. And then we can go back into the graph with all that information and find an answer. So just before, I'm, just as before, I'm going to lay it out in a table. So the takeoff distance required has to be less than 2,000 feet. Takeoff distance required times 1.15 has to be less than 3,000. And the takeoff distance required times 1.3 has to be less than 2,500. So our limiting distances would be 2,000, 2,609, and 1,923 feet. There's no slope or condition factors to apply in this sense, in this example, sorry. So we use 1923 feet. So on the graph, it's here, it's just under the, uh, this line that's next to the 2000 foot marker. Uh, the temperature and altitude have already been put in of, so I've already put it in on this graph as well, just to stop you looking at the back of my head again. But we've got 15 degrees and 4000 feet, which is there. We then go across the reference line and we would stop at that point. Then we would work from this side. So we've got our out our uh, distance that we just talked about we follow the guideline down we would then go across to the wind and then from that wind which was 10 knots we go up following the headwind guideline go up the way until reaching this reference line then from the reference line we go straight across and you'll have a line up here and a line a bit lower down and you follow the guidelines to uh, match them basically to make them connect and the point where they do connect you go straight down and you find the mass so the mass here looks like it's about 4,300 pounds the answers available were 4,750 4,050 4,550 and 3,950 so none of the answers are quite correct but the only one that's really that close would be 4,550 so that's the one we would pick. And again, it's the same thing that I talked about in the first example. They don't put the answers too close together just to allow for a few mistakes and inaccuracies in the graph. And uh, yeah, it would be really annoying if there was 4,310 and 4,320. Um, you would have to be really precise. It would take up way too much time. So yeah, closest is best. So in this question, we're asked to find out the two engine rate of climb with the following conditions. Temperature is minus 20, pressure altitude 18,000 feet, mass is 4,000 pounds, 
the mixture is lean to 25 degrees Fahrenheit of peak EGT and other conditions are as per the graph header. This is a relatively simple question. We just need to put in the numbers in the graph and this isn't a graph. You would probably use that often, but um, just as I did in the very first example, I'd look at the example question, see that we go up, across, we hit the line we want to, we go down and single engine is on this line. It's a very simple graph. Not all questions involve factors and tricks and stuff like that. So this is just a pop the numbers in, find an answer. So first thing we do, temperature and pressure altitude. Temperature of minus 20, pressure altitude 18,000 feet goes up to this line, and then we go straight across. There's about six lines here. We're going to the 4,000 pound line, and the line that is on the right hand side is the mixture being leaned. So we're going to the right hand side line of the 4,000 pound uh, bracket. And then we're going straight down and we can see that the rate of climb is just over a thousand feet, probably a thousand and fifty feet. So if we have a look at the answers, we can see that the options were 550, 1050, 870 and 1370. So the answer is pretty bang on for this one. It's 1050. Nice and easy. Simple marks in the exam. In this question, we're calculating the field length limiting takeoff mass with the following information. Pressure altitude's 8,000 feet, temperature 10 degrees. Five knot of headwind, there's no slope, it's dry tarmac. And the takeoff run available is 2,000 feet, but there's no stopway or clearway. So, if you remember, there is a different factor if we have no stopway or clearway. And if you don't remember, have a little look through the CAP698 and you will see it. The biggest difference is there's only one factor and it's the takeoff distance required times 1.25 has to be less than the takeoff run available. And then we go into the graph with all of our information, figuring out the uh, weight at the end of it. So the takeoff distance required times 1.25 has to be less than the Torah. So if we divide the Torah divide, uh, by 1.25, we see that the takeoff distance required has to be less than 1,600. There's no slope or surface condition factors to apply. So we go in with the temperature, the altitude, and that takeoff distance that we require and work it backwards. So first thing I do, I always like to start left to right. So I'm going with the temperature and the pressure altitude. It was 10 degrees and we go up to the 8,000 feet uh, pressure altitude and then it's straight across to the reference line. At that point I would stop, come back, and I know that my takeoff distance requirement was 1,600 feet, which is this point here follow the guideline down to the reference line and then we go straight across, just as the example question did, it goes down then straight across to our wind, which was five knot headwind. From the five knot headwind, I go up slightly until this next reference line. At that reference line, I make a line straight across. And then we follow the guidelines in between this reference line and the line we've just drawn across to find a meeting point and then at that meeting point, we go straight down to find a mass of about 4,500 pounds. The answers that were available were 3,400, 4,750, 4,400, and that the takeoff is not possible. So again, just go for the closest one, 4,400 pounds would be the correct answer. So there you go, that's it. Hopefully you can see that the graphs are not that big of a deal really. And if you forget things like factors or even how to do the graphs themselves, there's plenty of examples and information in the CAP698 document. Um, basically, by getting familiar, you won't go wrong. And learning where to find stuff can be very useful, not necessarily uh, knowing all the stuff that's in this document because there's, it's quite thick. I mean, look at the size of it. That's, that's just half of it. And it's, uh, yeah, pretty thick. So if you know where to find stuff, it's a lot better than knowing the whole thing, I think, personally. Next, we're going to move on to Class A regulations, which apply to jets and large propeller aircraft. They're very similar. There's factors and slopes and headwind components, and all that kind of stuff to think about. Um, but it's just slightly different because we need to be a bit safer.